Unit 4, Part 2. The journey continues. What adventures could bestow upon us in Part 2? We continue from Part 1 talking about discounts. Except a new kind of discounts is developed in the Empire. Out in the outposts, we learn payment terms and cash discounts. Before we talked about trade discounts, now we'll move into task cash discounts so invoice is sent okay the seller specifies the payments of terms on that invoice so what you purchased when you have to pay how much it cost you and so on now the business selling the goods often offers a cash discount to encourage people to pay it is a royal pain in the butt to have to chase somebody for money uh, because, of course, the seller has bills to pay as well, and it, it's expensive to call someone up uh, over and over, perhaps drop by their place of business asking for a check. Right? That, has a, that, has, that has a cost component to it. Besides, it's frustrating as hell. So a lot of times the seller will offer a, a discount. You know, pay within a certain amount of time. We'll knock a little bit off your, uh, off your bill. Okay, win-win for everybody business the seller gets uh, his or her payment uh, promptly and easily uh, the purchaser gets a nice little discount to compensate uh, for pain a little early okay. so on the invoice and when you look at the payment in terms invoices holy gosh they are they are heterogeneous Ooh, big university word there in other words each one is unique into itself. A little bit more uh, homogenization with uh, a lot of invoice software packages, but they're still quite distinct. But there are a couple of things, a couple of items that are common to all of them. And of course, if you're offering a discount, <laughs> bingo, you got to say what that discount is. So often in on the invoice is, is the rate of discount. Okay. The discount period. Okay, so this discount rate applies if you pay within ah, this amount of time. And then the credit period. Hey, buddy, let's pay up by this time uh, discount or no discount. Okay, so we have those basic items, you know, are in the, are in the invoice somewhere. Now there's a different, now okay, so you say, hey, I get a cash discount, okay, and it says, uh, let's say it says 10 days, pay with 10 days from when, <laughs> right, so it's a big controversy now, when, when does, when does the time start ticking, right, because I mean, it could be uh, on the invoice date, which some people don't like, because often the invoice date can be generated uh, when the item is shipped, uh, when it was ordered and so like the clock is ticking and you haven't gotten your stuff yet and you go oh, i don't know if i want to pay early i'm not sure everything is in the shipment so ordinary dating invoice date now and so the, so there's other ways of dating it as well so sometimes it's the end of the month dating eom okay and it just means we start counting on the last day uh, of the month the, the month being the, the month of the invoice date. Okay, So, for instance, today is August uh, 27th, invoice date August 27th, but we really don't start counting until the end of the month, August 31st. And then the third one is receipt of goods. We start counting when you actually get the stuff. That can be kind of important when it takes you a long time to get that stuff. Right? You give a 10-day discount from the invoice date, but it takes 30 days to get the stuff, eh, you're probably not taking advantage of the discount rate. So sometimes receipt of goods is kind of handy in that case. And now everything is tracked. I mean, there was a time where it was a little bit harder to keep track. When did they actually get the stuff? When exactly did the stuff uh, arrive? Or it was a very long time lag before you knew that your customer had got received their goods but now it's in, almost instantaneous i know i ship ups somebody signs for it the guy's walking to his truck he's clicking the little handheld and I, i've almost got notification almost right away okay 
So receipt of goods is not, uh, might, might make a, a resurgence. Okay, so here's an example of an invoice. And on the invoice, you see, okay, here it is. For Finance Inc. Woo-hoo, yay, go Finance Inc. Located in downtown Edmonton. Holy cow. Ooh, check out that website. Um, and so we have our, our, our invoice date and who we've billed it to, where we've shipped it, what the heck they ordered, uh, and then the terms. You look on the terms, you see this 2 slash 10 N slash 30. Okay, mysterious stuff, important stuff, okay? Uh, and we'll talk about that in, in a sec. So you have the, uh, the initial um, subtotal, how um, much tax, taxes applied, and, and so on. Okay. And so you have the amount of the invoice. And there we go. So we got our basic stuff there, and, and that's all very, very, very cool. Remember, terms of payments going to play an important role in our story coming up real soon. Okay, so zeroing in on those terms of payments. What the heck does all that mean, man? It looks like 2 divided by 10. Well, what's that all about? So the 2 represents the cash discount. The 10 represents how long the discount period lasts, the length of the discount period. So you get a 2% discount if you pay this within 10 days. Now, you got the three dating methods, 10 days from where, okay? So, uh, and then, so we got that to consider. And then N, never less, the net amount, so N's the net amount, is payable in 30 days. So N slash 30 just means, okay, if you took advantage of the discount, great. Uh, if you didn't, uh, you got to pay this bill in, in 30 days anyway. Or, 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 you only paid part of the invoice in the first 10 days. So if you pay part of the invoice in the first 10 days, you still get a discount on the part you paid, but you still have an amount owing after that. That amount owing after that, due in 30 days. Hence the word net. Whatever amount is owing 30 days, uh, it's got to be paid. With or without the discount. Okay, so we have all that words in case you forgot what I said. So we have a couple of scenarios. Let's talk about a couple of scenarios and uh, we'll you know do some figure counting and counting days and so on. So we have, uh, we're gonna determine the payment needed to settle an invoice with a net amount of $950, okay? So just note about this net amount. All the trade discounts we were talking about in part one those have already been applied. Okay, so now we're just strictly looking at the cash discount for paying early. Okay, trade discounts again have all been applied. So all that unit one part one stuff, or sorry, unit four part one stuff, already been taken care of. Okay, so we have a $950 invoice. It's dated September the 22nd. And if we if it there's not a specified um, counting method like EOM, end of month, or ROG, receipt of goods, we assume it's just ordinary dating. Ordinary dating is by far the more prevalent, uh, I guess, method. So in the absence of information to the contrary, we assume ordinary dating. Okay, so we uh, dated September 22nd, terms 2 uh, slash 10. So two percentage point uh, discounts so or 2% discount if paid within 10 days. Uh, net is due in 30. So if the invoice is paid on October the 10th, pay the whole invoice on October the 10th, how much do we pay? Well, the first thing is we got to determine is we start doing our counting, right? We do our count. Okay, October 10th, that's within 30 days of September 22nd. So, okay, okay I guess that's legitimate. Now I start September 22nd and start counting my days. Now, how do you count days? Uh, there's a couple of conventions that you can use. Some conventions say you count the first day but not the last day. Some say you, you count the, um, the the second day or after full days at the end of the day. I'm just going to count at the end. Like, I'm not going to count September 22nd. I'm going to count September 23rd, first, end of the first complete day. September 24th, my birthday by the way, uh, at the end of the second day. September 25th is the third day, 26th is the fourth day, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 
October the 1. October the 2. Okay, October the 2 is the uh, last day of the uh, of the uh, discount period. Okay. So uh, if I'm paying this thing on October the 10th, I'm, I'm getting no discount. It's outside October. It's later than October the 2nd. October the 2nd being the last day of the discount. I'm paying the full boat here, 950 bucks. However, in the second scenario, I pay it on October 1st. Woohoo! Two percentage point debt discount. Yeah! Love those discounts. Okay, so I take the 2% off the $950, and that's the amount I send. So kind of a key thing to think about here is the $950 becomes like my old list price. And the amount I actually send, my net price, is the post-discounted amount. Keep that in mind. It's going to be a recurring theme. Okay, so I take the 2% off the 950, just like I'm applying any discount. Doggone it, that trade discount form, man, you could use that everywhere. It's like, uh, it's like that hot sauce. I can use that blank blank on anything. Same sort of deal here. Okay, so we have the whole bloviated explanation if you like to read it and you don't like to listen to my eloquent voice. And at the end of the day, we see, okay, the amount we actually pay, that is the same as like saying the net amount. That's like N. Right? The amount on the invoice, that's like saying L, which is essentially what's saying here, right? I take the two percentage point off the L, just like I would in the regular course of uh, calculating the discount, I cut that check or I transfer the $931 to my vendor. Keeping 19 bucks for just paying it 10 days early. It's a pretty sweet deal if you start to calculate what kind of rate of return that is. <laughs> You're certainly not getting that in the bond market. End of the month dating. Again, like I was just commenting before, and I'll, I'll just repeat it again because it's some of this stuff is pretty old school in its approach and its terminology, so it's not int intuitive, I don't think. I mean, it, it sort of makes sense. End of the month, dating means start counting at the end of the month. doesn't mean you start dating somebody at the end of the month, but you start counting at the end of the month. And so um, EOM, what would that be? Well, it was the invoice, remember? September the 22nd. Okay, so on that September the 22nd, the end of the month is now September the 30th. I start counting the 10 days from September the 30th. October 1, October 2, October 3, October 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hey, hey that October 10th payment is now in the discount. I'm getting a $19 discount. Right? What, what changed? When I started counting, when the discount period begins. So it, it may seem like kind of a subtle and, and kind of kind of a you know what's the big deal about this but you know 19 bucks is 19 dollars right um so uh let's just roll with some uh, some questions here now the answers are on the slide so I, I won't I won't uh, flesh it out but we'll talk about it Right, but we can see we can see the answer. If you if it makes sense to you, you know you can always skip ahead a little bit on the uh, presentation. So we have an invoice for twelve hundred thirty three dollars ninety five cents. It's dated July the sixteenth. Terms are two ten E O M end of month. Okay, and is paid on August the tenth. What amount of the invoice is paid? Okay, so we start counting from the end of the month, right? I mean, it, it seems like it's a long time from July 16th to August the 10th, but if we're counting, we're not starting counting until July the 31st, but at August 10th, just like we were just talking about with the September 22nd uh, invoice bill, right? We're in, we're in the discount period. Right? August 10 is within the discount period. So we get to apply the discount. We take out our discount formula. We get to use it one more time. That 1233 Point nine five becomes the like the list price, right? The net price is what we calculate post discount. So we apply the discount, two percent discount, and then the twelve oh nine point two seven. That's how much we actually send to our seller. Okay, 
So it's just it's just like us buying stuff again. Right? It's like trade discounts, you know, part two enhanced, right? We just we just move forward into doing it a new way. Super duper stuff. Receipt of goods, uh, and then again, you know, similar, we're counting, it's a, there's a certain repetition to this. Uh, so Hansa Import Distributors has uh, received an invoice of $8,465 dated May the 10th. The terms 3 slash 10 and slash 30, uh, receipt of goods, ROG, for shipment of clocks that arrived on July the 15th. Arrived on July 15th. Now that becomes the crucial date, right? Uh, what is the last day for taking the cash discount and how much is to be paid if the discount is taken? So remember, ROG just means I start counting the discount period when I actually receive the items. So I receive the items on May 2nd, or sorry, May 10th, and I start counting from there. Okay. Nevertheless, uh, the entire date is due uh, within 30 days of the receipt of those goods. Okay, so again, I'm sorry, the, the invoice was dead dated May 10th. The good clocks arrived on July 15th. All counting starts on July 15th. 10 days from July 15th, it's July 25th, end of the, so that becomes the end of the uh, discount period. And ne nevertheless, 30 days after July 15th is when everything needs to be paid. We've talked about this a little bit at the beginning. I'll talk about it again because it's sort of a nuanced point. Partial payments. You're not obligated to pay the full invoice off uh, in one gobble. Right? You can pay a, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, here, a little bit there. You still get a discount, however. Right? The part or the portion that you pay within the discount period, you apply the discount to that portion. So it becomes a little tricky from an accounting point of view, but it's awesome from a business point of view. And then the remaining is 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 becomes becomes due. So it's important you can get a partial discount. You don't need to get always give you getting the full uh, discount. Okay, let's do some questions on this. Question one, uh, Busby Bus Services. Say that real fast, five times. Busby Bus, Busby Bus, Busby Bus, Busby Bus. Received an invoice for $2,750, dated June the 22nd, with terms 3, 15, 130, and 60. And right now you're going, holy crap, we've only been doing a discount or no discount. What the heck is this 130 stuff? Well, what that essentially means is uh, you get 3% discount if you paid in 15 days. Cool. You get a 1% discount if it takes you more than 15 days, but you pay within 30. And then the net is due after 60 days. So you don't get to combo up the dividends. Uh, sorry, dividends. <laughs> you don't get to combo up the discounts or anything like that. You get one discount. It's just a matter of which discount. 3%, 1%, or 0%. So if the invoice is paid on June the 30th, how much is to be paid? Well, okay, June 30, 22nd to 30th, da, da, looks like eight days. woo we get the big discount. So I'm getting the 3% discount on this thing. So discount rate, 0 0.03. Now it's just net price. Remember, it's asking me, how much do I pay? I pay the net price. You go into a store and they say 50% off. I don't pay full price. I pay the 50% off price. It's no different here. So I'm looking for the net price. And I have the original invoice, which is like my list price of $27.50. I apply the discount, 3%. And I get the net price is equal to about $2,667.50. And uh, now I go to Part B. So there's my Part A. Let's do Part B. Part B goes on and says, if the invoice is paid on August the 15th, how much is to be paid? Ooh, now I got to count more days. Now, if you want, here's a, you know, in the movies, you sort of see a glimpse of the future 
uh, you know, say hints of the future in, in, in sort of the current uh, scene. Let's say hint of the future here. Something that's going to be very important to us in, chi in the simple interest and in compound interest and later on in bonds. How many days between June 22nd and August the 15th? There is a function that will do that. We will talk about that function in the simple interest section. But keep in mind, there is an app for that. Yeah. It's called Days Between Dates. Ooh, go look it up. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in, in a future unit. Yeah, just to keep you, that's a cliffhanger, right? It's, ooh, it's the tie-in, so you keep listening. Whoa, do you build, can you feel the drama here? Holy cow, I'm all goosebumpy. So we got, we'd look at, we count how many days from June the 22nd to uh, August the 15th, and we get, there's about 54 days. Trust me on this one, but you can count it out. I encourage you to do so. It's good to know how many days are in each month. So it's 54 days. So does the first discount apply? No. Does the second discount apply? No. And okay, so I'm just paying the, the full freight. No discounts on this one. What you see on the invoice, that's what you pay. Okay. Question number two. Now, question number two is a lovely one because it deals with the partial payments. What I said was important, but uh, can be a little tricky. So what amount will reduce the amount due on an invoice of $2750 by $740? Okay, so those little prepositions are extremely important to us. Okay, so we know we have an invoice of $2750. We want to reduce that invoice amount by $740. That invoice of $2750 is like a list price, right? And that's what we've been that's what we've been, that's what we've been calling it so far. So if I'm reducing it by $740, I'm reducing it by a list price as well. Okay. So I'm being credited to $740. So the list price is the same as the amount I'm being credited. Notice that that is distinct from the amount I actually pay. Amount I actually pay is net price. It's been that way throughout the whole unit. It still remains. But this L can be is the amount credited. And again, just to refresh, N is the amount actually paid. Very important distinction. Okay. So that L is equal to 740. And I want to find the N. What do I got to cut the check for? So N is the list price. Applying discounts, discounts, anyone discounts? Yeah, it was made between in the discount period. So I apply, oops, I apply the discount. And the actual amount I pay is $703. The amount I get credit for is the $740. $37 discount. All right. Let's go on to question number three. An invoice of $640, a payment, sorry, a payment of $650 is made within the discount period on an invoice of $2,400. Terms of the invoice are 5 uh, slash 10 and slash 30. How much remains owing after the payment? So we made the payment of six fifty. Right? We, we cut that check. We transferred that amount of money. So that is our N. That's an amount actually paid. That's real dollars. That's cash money right there. Okay. The invoice is twenty four hundred dollars. That's like our first or initial list price. So I need to find how much I'm being credited. Right. I need amount credited. All right, so I'm looking for L here. So I know my N, 650, equals to my L, and then the discount rate, which does apply here, right, and I apply that discount. Okay. 650 equals to 0 0.95 L. I isolate L 
and I get $684.21. Now that $684.21 represents how much I get credited. And so that's a, that's a stage in the process. What I really want is how much do I still owe. So that amount owing, I take the original amount to 2400 Subtract from it the amount I get credited, which is the $684.21. And so the remaining amount is how much I still owe on this thing. So just know we had a couple of, we had an intermediate calculation here to find out how much I got credited. Okay, I take the how much I got credited off of how much I have owing, and I get my final answer. Uh, one thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars and seventy nine cents and so concludes that part three we'll pick up at the markup place and finding selling price and good things like that